As you've seen from the last two lessons, the actual mapping of designs into a KDC is easy. Adjusting the baselines and spacing can require a little bit more work. Now there are two things to consider when adjusting the baselines. You need to know which letters have descenders. And those are the parts of the letter that drop below the baseline. Typically in standard alphabets, we see letters like lowercase g, j, p, q, and y commonly have descenders. In a lot of fonts, uppercase Qs often have a short bit that drops below the baseline. Another thing to consider is you need to have some understanding of how stitches push and pull. Perfect alignment on screen does not necessarily equate to perfect alignment after stitching. To learn more about this, see the lessons on compensation. Now, fortunately, the actual process is easy and you can fine tune letters or even replace specific letters without affecting the other designs of the set. Now, cross stitch letters do not require any adjusting. They all sit on the same baseline and they all have the same height. The difference between the baseline, which is at the bottom where the letters normally sit, and the top, this is called the cap height. So in this set, we need to adjust the Q. I'll select the set from the drop down list. We'll scroll down to find the Q. And you can see how it's kind of floating up above. And if we look at the O, we can see that the O just skims under this top line, the cap height. So what I need to do is adjust this one so that it looks about the same. I'll select it and click Adjust Baseline and Spacing. And this is a pretty large one, so I need to enlarge my window some. You do have the option of scaling up here. We could make it smaller, but I actually like it quite large. It's easier to see what I'm doing. These are the spacing adjustments. And the default placement is right along the edge on either side. The default placement of the letters is to sit right on the baseline. So the bottom of the letter, no matter what type of letter it is, it's going to sit right there on the baseline. Now instead of moving the letter, we are adjusting the baseline. So we need to select that and I'll just move it up. And notice how it moves the cap height line with it. And I'll just move it till it's right there. And this is good. I'll click OK. Now let's go down and look at the two. I'll just do a search for the numbers. See how the two is kind of floating? I'll select it, click Adjust Baseline and Spacing, grab that baseline. When I hover over it and it turns green, then I can move it. And just move it like that. Now in some fonts, and this happens to be one, not all the numbers sit on the baseline. And not all the numbers are the same height. Notice that these numbers are smaller than the reference height. The reference height was based on an uppercase letter. So I'll adjust the spacing on this one. It happens to be about there. Now how will you know this? When you buy your stitch file sets, a lot of times there will be an alphabet image that shows all the letters lined up. And you'll be able to look at it from that. If you don't have that, you might be able to determine what is the font. So for example, if we go to Amethyst, I also happen to have a true type version of the Amethyst font. And so I could use that as a reference for where, where all the baselines are. This one was a tricky one because if we look at the uppercase letters, they have sort of a dropped cap, whereas the lowercase letters all sit on the baseline. Also notice that they have a character spacing of zero. This is a script. I want them to attach to each other. If we go back to the uppercase letters, notice how this right side spacing line is moved in. That's because this tail would make too much space between this letter and the next letters. So let's see how to do that. I haven't finished adjusting this font yet, so we'll find a letter. So how about this K? Select the K. I'll click Adjust Baseline and Spacing. And the side lines move independently. So I can move either side just to where I need it. And after I've adjusted this, 
I would create a design that had all the characters in this set, and I would look to see how they aligned with each other. I can always come back in and fine tune things. Looking at it on screen is one thing, stitching it out is another because stitches distort. On satin columns, they're going to push out at the end, so that's going to push out a little there, but the columns themselves will get skinnier. So that's why we need to consider about this baseline business when we're doing certain types of characters. So let's go back to a design. You probably can't adjust the spacing on every letter to make it perfectly match up with the next letter because it depends on what letter comes next, right? If you get an approximate spacing set up, then you're able to reshape. So I'll select this, I'll click reshape, and I can move the letters independently like this. Now these are going to take a little longer to regenerate because of all the stitches involved. And you can also control spacing down here. The letter spacing here is going to be overall between every letter. The KDC tool in Hatch makes it quick and easy to map those alphabet files to their keyboard equivalent. Fine-tuning the baseline and spacing does take a bit longer depending on the set. And remember, you aren't limited to just alphabets. You can include borders and ornaments with an alphabet set or have a set that is just embellishments. For example, if we go to the amethyst set, if I go to Extended Characters, I don't have anything in here. And maybe I could put ornaments in there, or borders, or some other variant of the letter. And to find those, we could go to Insert Character. And we'll see all the characters that are mapped. 